Live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's The Cube at the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. With hosts Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to Cambridge, Mass, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Paul Gillen. We're here at the MIT Information Quality Symposium. This is theCUBE. The Cube is SiliconANGLE's live mobile studio. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. The chief data officer is a role that's emerged within regulated industries, in particular financial services, government, and healthcare. Uh, and we're going to drill down into um, the CDO role and maybe even talk a little bit about the healthcare segment. Professor Yang Lee is here. Uh, she's with Northeastern University. Yang, welcome to theCUBE. My pleasure. Yeah, so you're doing a lot of work now, uh, particularly in healthcare. You've got a cross-discipline, you've, uh, uh, you've done work in supply chain, many, many things. Right now you're focusing on the chief data officer and the role of the CDO. And in particular, you're focused on healthcare, right? Well, currently, yes, yeah. yes. Because we, I, I thought that um, the healthcare is one of the uh, uh, major uh, areas that many CDOs uh, are working uh, in the healthcare and financial uh, industry as well. And uh, I thought that uh, many things are done, uh, but maybe, uh, maybe data managers or CDOs can contribute something that they haven't really figured out. For example, uh, medical error. Um, is it all done? Many people are working on it, but is there something that uh, not medical people, uh, data uh, managers or CDOs, can they contribute something in that area? Because uh, data flows um, all chains, um, not just database, but how data is collected, stored, managed, and then they are consumed and used, and then it's also reused. So I tell my students that data has more than uh, nine lives. Cat has nine <laughs> lives, and data has more than nine <laughs> lives, and somebody's information is somebody else's data. So it gets very complicated, and also any process that you see, you'll see some silos. So left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. So once we open up that sort of structural problems. So we examine business process, and we examine how people work, and how routine work is handled, and how data flows. I think there's something that we can figure out and contribute um, um, in addition to what people are working on. Yeah, I read a stat one time, I think the average data set that's created has, uh, uh, the number 13 is my head, 13 and 25 maybe, but copies, just copies. So you're talking about the full data life cycle, the pipeline of data, a friend of mine in financial services calls it the, the data pipeline or the data factory. And you're studying that particularly now within healthcare. So when you look at a, when you, when you, when you initiate a research project, how long do you spend, like for instance in the healthcare, how long do you spend on that segment? Is it, is, is it it's months I presume, or is it years sometimes? Or how long do you, do you take studying a, a segment? Um, I think depending on in the purpose, mm -hmm. um, the main thing is that you you really uh, talk with the people who have been working on that. You know, I uh, usually talk with the practitioners in the hospital or right. insurance and all that sort of space, healthcare space. So they have been working on 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and we might have just studied, you know, one or two or three years but we can get all the wisdom from the practitioners. And then we bring in the theoretical background. And uh, so we collaborate together and come up with uh, better insights. So do you, do, you, do you formulate a premise going in or do you go in with an open mind? So what are you after right now in the healthcare industry, specifically as it relates to information around the chief data officer and, and data? What are you trying to extract? Um, one of the things that I realized is that the, the data that is collected and used for the clinical side, and the data that collected and used for the management side, they may not be consistent. Um, we could speed up many decision making by making it consistent. Uh, so that is one area. And another area is there are so many routines developed in 
hospitals, you know, emergency rooms, and, and even in IT shops. And are there any routines that we need to review? Um, is there anything that we can uh, um, compare business process with how data flow? Uh, so that are the areas that I think mm -hmm. we're just opening up now. Your, you published a paper in, in March, uh, the uh, Cubic Framework for the Chief Data Officer, really a very comprehensive oh, thank you. Uh, study of, of uh, you interviewed a great many CDOs for this. <clears throat> the profile that you define here looks like kind of a Superman. I mean, the, yes. the, the, this person has, has a marketing role, development role, uh, an, an internal, uh, internal evangelism, external uh, sell, selling concept externally. They're involved in all kinds of different mm -hmm. projects. Uh, I mean, did you find that, is there any one profile of a CDO that you think is emerging, or are these people, are, is this job going to be very specific to the environment and the needs of that company? Well, first, Thank you. I think I agree with your assessment of their superman and superwoman. Mm -hmm. The CDOs are yes indeed. Um, the reason why the roles are all over, you know, for example, I identified sort of uh, seven roles based on the three dimensions, whether they're focusing on internal um, aspect or external aspect, or they're focusing on different uh, data space uh, or data uh, CDOs are focusing on just doing the sort of operational, uh, keeping the lights on, so to speak, mm -hmm. or they're focusing on strategic aspect of company. Uh, but the, I think the key insight here is collaboration. So CDOs collaborate with other uh, officers. So in that case, depending on the organization's goal and depending on which CDO that they're uh, collaborating with, uh, their role will be quite different. So most common role is, I recognize the first one, that they are internally focusing on it and they're trying to make the service uh, done very well. Mm -hmm. That's probably most of the CEOs start with that role. But uh, other CEOs move on to external roles that they uh, work with uh, other supply chain partners and um, later on they can really uh, work with the CDOs uh, to really set up uh, innovative process to uh, come up with a new product and new process uh, service or they could change even the way they, did, they do business. So did, it's more pro pro uh, transformational role. Did, so did, it varies. Did you find that, that many of these CDOs were building organizations underneath them or were most of them operating uh, solo? Alone. They are working solo. Mm -hmm. I would really urge them to really work together because I found that CDOs who are successful and have longevity are the ones that who collaborate with other other uh, uh, officers. But I, I think you know, in corporations, it's often thought that if, if you don't have a staff, if you don't have a budget, then you don't have a job or you don't have a job <laughs> in the future. Mm -hmm. um, since most of these, these CDOs are working uh, on their own collaboratively, as you say, do you see that as a threat to the, to, to the role? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I think what they work on their own, but that they should have a CDO office. In other words, they should have their, their staff and they have the budget, uh, just like any other C staff. And, and the, the, the staff might work on things like standards for data in a particular right, application. Right. So there will be, uh, uh, some of their staffs will work on data quality, some others will work on data governance, data strategy, architect, and you know, so depending on their agenda, they will work on different things, like new things like data analytics. So one person cannot do all. I think we can see the, the value, uh, 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 inward value of a CDO, but in what context did you find they had external value? Uh, many CDOs, they, uh, after they have some sort of uh, house kind of intact, so to speak, and they go out and talk with uh, um, other CDOs in, in the industry. And uh, for example, they will develop some kind of consortium and develop to work on uh, standardization mm -hmm. of their business process or standardization of their technology or standardization of their, their uh, data. So let's uh, decide on uh, certain items so that uh, in this industry we say 
these are standards and those are not. So the, that is very important because now um, companies exchange um, share data. So making sure that their item in their own internal data are all set. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to have a great data use. Right. Because data is going to go over and over different companies and different industries. You mentioned collaboration being important. So, so the, what is the uh, ideal personality profile of a CDO? What, what, what kind of people are they? Um, I would say people who can reflect on what they do. So I think we, you can go and uh, sort of, uh, you know, you can be go and get her and, 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 and uh, communicate very well. That could be uh, one uh, aspect that, you know, regardless of whether you're a CDO or other officers, mm -hmm. they will be welcome. However, I think particularly CDOs, you have to know how to reflect on what you're doing because there's no sort of a set rules or set answers. These are new area. So you should really, um, you know, I think this symposium is a great opportunity that they can come and talk with other CDOs in different industry and then they reflect on what they do and then they go home and, and maybe they will tweak some of the things or they might initiate something different to do. Professor Lee, what do you say to a, an executive in the, in the corner office who says, you know, I'm thinking about maybe having a CDO. Everybody tells me I need to have a CDO. Why do I need a CDO? Why do you need a CDO? Uh, traditionally, many data-related work has been done without CDO. The trouble was CD, the data management's uh, work is really closely related to a business process. So people who are at the middle level and then they're trying to do something and then they found that somebody else's business process is either flawed or not handled very well uh, and they go in there and then I hear this again and saying, you are digging in my backyard. <laughs> so the managers, they may be all good leaders, but they don't have organizationally sanctioned authority to do the work in other business process. Mm -hmm. So if you have the C officer and the company says, right, you, your work is to go and, and dig all our gardens. So the entire organization becomes their own beautiful garden instead. So when I hear Paul describe in, in your paper the, the sort of Superman role, um, there's a wide spectrum of responsibilities. I remember Mario Fario last year was on, and I'm not sure what was left uh, for anybody else to do, because the CDO sort of had that purview from security and governance and, and on and on and on. Basically, the only thing that was left was, I guess, IT infrastructure. Um, and they so, usually focus on one item at a time, though, yeah. Even the CDO, you Right, saying. right, right. They focus on one item at a time, or they move around and, and find a new focus. And, and I, do you feel that's best practice, or should they take a more you know, systems view and have sort of ongoing attention on each of those domains? Well, in terms of domain, I think it, really, it will be totally depending on the organization. Mm -hmm. In other words, if that company, in other words, um, you need the, particularly this, the company that sort of everything is new, and you have to pay attention to everything, and so be it. But I found that CDOs tend to focus on one item at a time, although they may review other things. So what's going on at the conference for you? Um, some of the learnings that you've encountered, uh, what's exciting you here? Right? The dean yesterday said, do something do different. Something do something different, new. yes, they, this right. was what's, terrific. What, 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 did that inspire you? Have you heard other things, other ideas that you're going to take away from uh, this? This event? was terrific. I probably have too many ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great to talk with practitioners who are, you know, as I talked to Paul again uh, about the reflective practitioners, the way they sort of uh, ask questions, I love to ask, I love to um, talk with the practitioners who ask questions or who challenges uh, uh, the, the, you know, some of the researchers' papers. Uh, so yesterday, for example, somebody said, can't that be done by accountant, not CDO? <laughs> so those are very good questions. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, right, so. 
we, we had a very interesting comment from one of our guests yesterday who was a CIO, and he said that he foresees that 10 years from now we will have many fewer CIOs and many more CDOs. And it makes sense when you think of infrastructure now becoming increasingly part of the cloud. Uh -huh. uh, information is, is the asset. Uh -huh. uh, do you see one, uh, one position superseding the other? Will the CDO become more uh, common than the CIO? I would say if you ask me more CDOs will be established, my answer would be yes and more CDOs established, um, that answer would be yes as well. But if you ask me which, uh, you know, either CDO or CIO, which would grow faster, I would say CDO. Because I see the need, um, you can see from this symposium and other forums that I think CIO will stay and their focus might be different, uh, but I think the growth of the CDO will be there. And well, I hope they collaborate. Well, uh, uh, I think obviously the, the sentiment in this crowd at the MIT uh, Information Quality Symposium is that the CDO role is emerging. And, and by the way, that's a fact, it is, we know that. Uh, and, and should be independent mm -hmm. of the CIO. Mm -hmm. And that's very clear in those industries mm -hmm. that I mentioned, the mm -hmm. regulated industries. Mm -hmm. It seems that's a consensus that's mm -hmm. well accepted. Mm -hmm. Outside of those industries, it's not as well accepted, it yes, seems. Yes. Do you agree with that? And, it, and there seems to be, uh, a prevailing, maybe it's not prevailing wisdom, but if you even ask, if people mm. are even tuned into the question, mm -hmm. they feel like, oh, well, that's the that's the role of the IT group. Mm -hmm. um, but the IT group really has never had the, I think, you, you, the so sort of the authority to sort of implement data governance. That's always been sort of separate, but it's kind of been a, a back office function, records management. Right, and, right. And, and so, what's making it emerge now? Is it is it the big data meme? Is it technology? Is it awareness of data as a competitive advantage? What's why now? I use the nature of data. Um, now more people are using data, and the quality of data more exposed, uh, more visible, and everybody is using data. More people will be using data, and data will be used globally, going back and forth. Uh, so CIO's role, I mean good CIO's I'm, I'm sure they take care of you know, technology and data, but I've heard that they focus more on systems, so making sure that all the systems and systems infrastructure is done very well. So when I went into hospitals, um, when there's a data quality problem and you ask uh, uh, people working in technology uh, uh, division or CIO, uh, what's going on with this data? And they will say, that is actually the people who collected data. That's the people who made a mistake. And uh, so if you ask collectors and say, no, 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 it's because of the, the custodians, it's the IT people, um, or they, the, most often, they claim the data users, the data consumers, that that's wrong. I, I guess the traditionally CIOs are focusing on the middle piece, the systems, making sure the system is running right. Yeah, so but the, there are things that beyond the system that uh, you know data can have errors, and you know there are many. Uh, um, processes, the business process and, and data process. So that has to be handled more uh, business-oriented sort of approach. So Paul, but, I feel like the infrastructure is relatively straightforward, right? Yeah, the yeah. CDO doesn't want to run the infrastructure, but the application yeah. group, a lot of CIOs I know, you could, you could confirm this, spend a lot of time worried about the application yeah. and the liaison yeah. to the business. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where you need data to have an effective application, and that's where it gets a little gray. Right, right. That's right, well that's where the collaboration is important because the application exists to manipulate the data. Mm -hmm. uh, did you find in all the CDOs that you interviewed, did you find any common characteristics about their background, where they come from, came from, did they come from a technical background, accounting uh, perhaps, or more of a, a, a quantitative background? Were there any patterns there? I think more and more CDOs coming from business background. So it could be they're working in the marketing area, and then they marketing. become marketing area, they become CDO. And then they're working in the finance area, and then they become CDO. Uh, CIOs typically come from IT background. 
Um, however, there are some CDOs reporting directly to CIO. They tend to be from IT background. But people reporting directly to CEO or COO, they tend to be from business background, more domain background. That is interesting because I think we talk of the CDO in a, in, in a technology uh, context, mm -hmm. and this this conference has a heavy technology mm -hmm. overtone to mm -hmm. it. But it sounds like you're saying technology really is not part of the profile. I think people savvy about how we use data. Uh, there is community of sort of the people who are data consumers. They know more about data than people who handle system alone. Uh, so I mean, we need a knowledge about system as well as other processes. So somebody who has entire holistic knowledge about all processes, probably that those uh, are the good candidates for CDOs. That person's probably already running the company, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. All right, Professor Lee, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Pleasure. Really pleasure, thank you. Me. Always a pleasure. pleasure. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back after this word. This is theCUBE.